no matter how much dental correction there is, the, you know, the mid face can't be fixed after a big Marpy expansion that has this, you know, vertical drop right. uh, phenomenon. I've also seen sides drop. That one's fun. Yeah, that's even worse, right? Like, because that's, well, yeah, that's a bad one. That's another topic to talk about. Remember, we were going to talk about cranial. Um, but I had a patient that the only drop that I've significant drop that I've seen, I actually corrected her cranial base first. So I had treated her, her, her joints with um, a pod appliance. Um, and looking at her befores, middles, afters, I leveled her cranial base and her joints, her ma- her mandible. And then she was mildly canted. And then what I noticed, her MSE was placed level to the occlusal plane. And then somehow after the separation or the split happened, I, I mean, I saw the MSE just not in the face or in, in you know, in um, in vivo in, in life. Um, but in examining it, I saw that the MSE went like this. So that meant the whole maxilla came down. And I, I, it's just, if it stayed parallel, that to me would have said it was, I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the mechanics on what happened with that. I have one. some ideas about those cases, but yeah. I, yes. So I think what, I think what's happening in those cases and this, this really gets to the heart of it, I think, which is the difficulty of, of planning a MARPI correctly. I think that the problem with aligning a MARPI to the bite plane is that if the bite plane is flat, but the skeleton isn't, then now you have an asymmetric pull on the skeleton. Yep. And that can often lead to an asymmetric tugging down because yep. of the drop down effect yep. of one of the frontal maxillary sutures. And then if that suture kind of gives, or even if one side is tugged more than the other, it can lead to this catastrophic dropping effect of the Absolutely. side that was pulled down. Makes sense. So well, ultimately the, the root problem is, in uncertainty around uh, orienting the jack screw of the marpy by using a simplistic rule of thumb, like, oh, always aligned to the bite plane. Yep. No, agreed. That was back in, this case was 20, 20 or 21. But now how I'm treating patients is treating the asymmetry in the cranium first and then marpy. Tell us about how that that's done. Are you able to actually change the cranium without any kind of orthopedic like intervention? No, you do need orthopedics and an amazing cranial osteopath or an SOT chiropractor. And there might be other types of chiropractors, but um, you need somebody who knows how to do cranial work, like literally move the bones of the cranium face. And then I use a homeo block for that purpose only, not for expansion. And it's mm-hmm. not an expander. So anyone who says it, don't do it. <laughs> If you're thinking, I agree, I agree. Expand. Um, so all the sutures of the cranium, all the sutures that more, more so the base of the skull is where I'm, I'm assessing, but the patient's going to see the osteopath or the SOT chiropractor and they're going to take care of everything. But cranial, it literally lets the sutures move or sorry, the bones be manipulated and move with the homeo block, you're propped open a little bit. And so I'm seeing, literally, I'm seeing changes in, in the leveling of the maxilla Wow! and the base of the cranium. It, it's wildly mm-hmm. cool. The other way to do it is with, and I'm toying with doing them together, but with restorative. So my training with Bob Walker, Robert Walker, he's Chirodontics, Mr. Chirodontics. That's his um, teachings. He's he's awesome. He's very he's very opinionated. He will never watch this. He doesn't even know how to get onto social media. Anyways, <laughs> sorry everybody. I am just I know everyone, and I'm just I'm very nice. I just no. We love that. We love honesty, and we love uh, shooting from the hip because that's when we get you know the truth. People, I, I guess we all have opinions, right? But some are just very so. Mm-hmm. Um, with his teachings that I've done over the last year and a half with him, I'm. He's a chiropractor. He has a nutrition background. And then he he's really big on the cranium. That's his that's his area. I believe he's an SOT chiropractor as well. But through our assessment, what we're doing is temporomandibular assessment, cranial assessment, then teeth. So it goes TMJ, stability, correct the cranium and the face, then move the teeth. 
And I'm, I'm learning this still. This is my newest passion um, and excitement because if we don't have a straight face and we're expanding on a crooked face and a crooked skull base, great. <laughs> this is why we're seeing all these outcomes and problems. But if we straighten the face, which nobody knows you can do, and I've seen, I've seen it, like I've seen it with my, like it, it works. It's not just like poop puffery. It's like, it's, I see this happening, mm-hmm. but then you can then straighten the teeth. In, in Bob Walker's world, um, what we're doing is you're measuring how much the cant is. So if there's a cant, we're, what we're looking at is, is the maxilla canted and by how much and how do we drop the high side? Hmm. So it's about, in my mind, sometimes I think, well, this is the vertical side. So we want to go this way, but it's really always, that's the right side, the downside. And then we've got to drop the maxilla. So what he's doing is we're dropping, we're getting the maxilla to drop and change. So you have to measure how much the drop is you need. And so what you do is you build up, you can use a splint, you can use um, onlays, temporary overlays, and in that exact height, and then through the cranial, get the man, or excuse me, the maxilla to drop. And does this end up causing, if the bite plane is flat to begin with, does that actually cause the bite plane to become a little bit canted? Correct. So then you either correct, that's when you get into your ortho. So then you correct that discrepancy with ortho or if the patient doesn't want to do ortho. So this can work in a non-airway practice, non-ortho practice. Then you can correct it with with restorative dentistry. I mean, I think that sounds certainly like the right idea. I mean, I can't vouch for its efficacy, but I think just the idea that you need to straighten things out before you blow them open, especially with a MARPI, is, is really critical. I think that's the future truly. And the bones of the skull, um, they breathe Mm. and they pump cerebral spinal fluid, but some of them can be stuck in a way that's not optimal. So when, when changes to the skull like that occurred, are they occurring on the sutures? Where, where, where does the skull give exactly? Cause it's probably not happening like in this contiguous (laughs) skeletal part, right? Is it happening like in the sutures? Yes. And osteopaths, you're saying, are actually getting those sutures to to change somehow? Yes. And those SOT chiropractors. But if you don't change the bite, everything goes back. Well, I shouldn't say it that way. It's it's not you have to change something for the stability. It's just like chiropractics, right? Generally speaking, Mm. you can see them every week for the rest of your life because you don't correct anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm.